Welcome, travelers, to the Xbox Passport Podcast, presented by Xbox Canada. The podcast all about the best value in gaming, Xbox Game Pass. I'm Steve Saylor, and joining me on this inaugural voyage is none other than my friend and yours, Girls on Game Zone, Leah Jewer. Hi, Leah! Hey, Steve! How are you? All is well. Really excited to be here today to finally get this going. What a great way to start off this podcast. I'm super excited. This is going to be so much fun. I know. I'm in, this, I'm in the same boat. Now, uh, Like but for those who are watching or listening, you, you may not know who the heck we are, how we, like, how do we know each other? Like, what is, wait, wait, who's, what, what, we've never done a project before. Uh, and so we're very excited to be able to launch this project. This has been, let me, let me tell you, let me, t- let me tell you, listeners, this has been a project we've been working on for several years, <laughs> several years now, and we finally get to do it. And we're so excited to find, to be partnering up with Xbox Canada. Uh, they are the official presenters of the show. Uh, and we're very excited. But before we get into all that, we should probably introduce ourselves, who we are, what we do, you know, how we met. So Leah, why don't you start off with, tell the lovely folks at home who you are. Okay, well, uh, my name's Leah, as Steve said. Uh, I am the host and co-founder of the Girls on Games podcast and website. Um, we have been around for 11 years now, which is, is kind of really crazy, May years? even longer. Yeah. Wow. So it originated at a rock radio station uh, on in Montreal, uh, show 97.7 with myself and my colleague, Catherine. Um, we were given permission to start a blog about video games, which was so much fun. Uh, we were the webmasters, so it was pretty easy when they asked us, uh, do you, you know, what do you need? And we're like, nothing, just you know, your approval. So we started it. It got uh, expanded across 13 radio stations across the country. We ended up doing and starting a podcast. Then we started our own site and everything. And uh, yeah, we've been 380 plus episodes of a podcast. You've been a uh, invitee on our show many times yep. to talk yep. about accessibility or deep dive into games like uh, anything that comes up. So yeah, super excited to be able to uh, sit and chat with you because, you know, I love Xbox. I love podcasting. Radio is in my blood. My job is at, I'm the senior content manager at iHeartRadio. So uh, yeah, it's been uh, a lot of fun. Yeah. And and I will say that kind of leads a little bit into kind of how we met uh, in that we, we actually were working for the same radio company, uh, but not in the same city. Like when you were in Montreal and I was in Toronto and we were all part of the same digital team and I remember we used to be like on on conference calls uh, together, like uh, on a regular basis, and and it just so happens like because I, I was thinking I'm like I was thinking about this too because I was I was trying to rack my brain like how did we sort of reconnect after that because after because uh, for those who have not grown up in Canada or don't know Canadian radio that's fine you don't need to know that th- that to prerequisite for this show but basically the company that we worked for got bought by another big company. And mm-hmm. we all got split up. I got mm-hmm. went for a radio station that went for another company. You got you, you stayed with, with with the with the the bigger one. Uh, and so like how did like, I can't I actually cannot actually remember how was it that we just kind of reconnect? Was it basically we when you moved back to Toronto? Not even. I think it was Twitter to tell you the truth <sighs> because you know being in the video game community ecosystem, Twitter's such a big piece of that. And uh, yeah, I think I stumbled across you doing, I think it was actually your VR video that popped up in my feed. Oh. And then I was like, I feel like I know Steve. So then started doing, (laughs) connecting the dots and reached out via DMs. And I was like, I think we know each other. (laughs) Lo and behold, (laughs) we did. (laughs) Okay, I love that. Cause yeah, then you like, uh, uh, and uh, actually let me, let me do my intro. Then we'll get into how we met. But I I wanted to at least mention that too. So, but so uh, hi, for those who may not know, uh, I'm Steve Saylor. Uh, I am a content creator, Twitch ambassador and uh, accessibility advocate and consultant in the video game industry. Uh, I basically, consultant wise accessibility, I kind of go to studios and I help them sort of uh, understand a little bit about uh, disabled players and what they would need in order to be able to play their games. And uh, there's been a few studios that have been, uh, I've, I've been had the pleasure and the honor to work along such amazing teams that are doing amazing work where I just kind of come in and just be like, here's here's my feedback go 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 nuts and they they basically make 
magic happen uh, within the studio. So I've uh, I've been able to in honor to work with uh, companies like Naughty Dog uh, on the Last of Us uh, series. Uh, I know this is an Xbox podcast, but yeah, you know what? PlayStation is kind of cool too. We, we could talk about that. Uh, also, I've worked with Xbox as well. I've worked with EA. I've worked with Ubisoft uh, and, and and Square Enix, like uh, kind of across the board uh, across the industry. And so uh, I used to work in radio. That's like I, like we talked about before. That's kind of how uh, Lee and I first met. But I was working in radio for about 10 to 12 years before jumping into the video game industry and and working in that and uh was like a, a, a like did all the digital content for uh two Toronto radio stations uh one of which was like a classic hit sort of 70s 80s 90s uh and then another one was a hip hop station and yes I was the whitest person working for that hip hop station <laughs> and uh I had to have a crash course in in uh, in hip hop in order to be able to work there that wasn't a requirement but that was just like I, I felt like okay I need to know uh what is this thing called hip hop you speak of uh <laughs> And I learned a lot. It was great. There's some great music in there. Uh, and so, uh, so basically, then I got, uh, then I basically kind of uh, got let go from that because, you know, as Lee, Lee, you know, it's like when you can't say you worked in radio unless you got laid off in radio. Uh, <laughs> so that happened to me, and uh, I decided to kind of go into full time in a, in a video game industry, and and here we are. And now that kind of leads into uh, sort of how this sort of show came about. I'm going to jump ahead because we we have a show notes, folks, for this show. But I wanted to kind of like, because I think this ties into uh, how this show came about. Um, because we have been trying to, like, we when we reconnected, uh, like, because you moved back to Toronto, uh, and we kind of reconnected and started hanging out, and we were trying to think of, like, a, a fun thing to do together. Because we not done, a, uh, like, a, we've been on guests on other stuff, but we mm -hmm. never did anything together. Um, and, and, uh, why don't you talk a little bit about the, our, our ill-fated cyberpunk, uh, show. Oh yeah. So Steve, uh, you know, like obviously Steve and I are nerds about video games, but like definitely when cyberpunk was announced, um, cyberpunk 2077, we were super keen on doing that pitched a show, had planned on doing it more like a deep dive, like think of it like a book club about mm -hmm. a video game, right? Is essentially what the concept that we had. We were going to bring in the RPG. We're going to do, you know, do a, uh, a tabletop RPG and all of that jazz. But uh, COVID had other things to say. So we parked Whoa, that but... one. <laughs> we parked that one. And uh, this concept was another one, the idea of a deep dive, you know, similar thing, but thinking about the ecosystem that is Xbox Game Pass um, as a another avenue of something that you and I could chat about because we were super impressed by what this service was, how it was being implemented, the expansion across platforms, devices, all the different types of games that were becoming a part of it uh, and all the things they've been championing, especially considering Steve and, and, and what you do, accessibility and everything too, and making sure that it's not just, uh, you know, the, the first person shooters and things like that. It does have games that speaks to me and my taste, it has games that speaks to you and your taste and everybody else out there. So, so yeah, this was kind of like what we were trying to do with the cyberpunk podcast elevated and evolved and now mm -hmm. actually here which is phenomenal that we got here we did exactly. it exactly like we're this, here this has been in the works since yeah pre-covid if uh yes. if we could ever think that far back because uh you know time is wibbly wobbly uh timey wimey uh yeah that's like so because yeah we've had this sort of idea for a while and we kind of thought well at some point we we could do this ourselves but we felt like you know we in order, like we thought that you know what? We want to give it a good chance, and so uh, we were able to uh, to pitch this to Xbox Canada, and they loved the idea, and they said, "Well, let's let's figure out how to be able to make this happen." And so they uh, they partnered up with us, and uh, and and kind of and allowed this sort of a show to be able to to happen, and uh, and we're very very excited for uh, for the future and and our partnership with them. Um, but so yeah, but basically, kind of like what to expect on uh, on the show. Uh, is essentially we are going to be talking about all things Xbox Game Pass. That was the one thing as we were kind of coming up with ideas for the for for a show to do together. We felt that even pre-COVID that 
there was something that was kind of like missing as far as uh, as far as like within the Xbox ecosystem. We all love and talking about Xbox Game Pass and all the big games that are releasing for it. Like when Bethesda dropped all their games all at once and on Game Pass, and we got like obviously Starfield and Redfall and Halo Infinite, all those uh, like really huge games that are coming to the platform. But there's also like because of how many games are releasing on Game Pass. Uh, from uh, m like many developers across the industry, whether it's AAA all the way down to to the indies, um, we basically thought, well, there's a lot of games that are there that don't necessarily get not a huge like not necessarily not the spotlight, but just not a huge amount of spotlight. And so our show essentially is allows us to kind of dive deep into the Game Pass library, find games that could potentially be your next favorite game. And uh, and then we get to sort of discuss it and try it out and play it and talk about it on the show. We'll get to review uh, uh, like uh, games as they kind of come up, including the games that we're super excited about for 2023. Uh, and uh, and it's because this seems to be hopefully the year of Xbox when it comes to the, the amount of games that they have slated just for this year alone. Uh, so yeah, this is going to be kind of like you're you basically think of it as as Leah said, like kind of like the book club for for Game Pass. We get to sort of dive deep into our own libraries and sort of. Find Find the hidden gems. Find those like, those stories. Those the, the that you that we that we love that that doesn't get a lot of attention. That's in that back sort of like shelf somewhere in the in the back part of a library uh, that doesn't like doesn't get the you know the editor's choice uh, as it were, but should be. Um, and like we'll be no, I get even better analogy. We'll be those librarians that basically like has like the beginning of, like the, the front of the library that has like so and so's favorite choice. It'll be Steve and <laughs> Leah's fa like uh, like favorite choice uh, books to be able to read. We'll do that for, for Game Pass. Um, yeah. What, what's going to be super cool, too, that we wanted to make sure that we got into this, considering what uh, Steve and I do with our normal shows and content that we create, is putting forward, you know, Xbox Game Pass as a global platform. Yes. But there are a lot of phenomenal game developers and games that are made right here in Canada. So we want to yes. make sure we highlight that as well as all the achievements being made in accessibility. So we are very much wanting to talk through those things, be them, you know, triple A titles, uh, right down to the indie darlings that we find on this service that have speak to you and I and the communities that we are involved with. Because I know at the Girls on Games crew, we're constantly, you know, always talking about what's available on Game Pass. Um, the fact that you can pick something and try it, you know, essentially for free right away, you know, cause yep. you're paying for a service that's there. It's so easy to, you know, taste test sample, you know, get an amused bush of a, of a video game. See if it's something you're going to like. Right. So, uh, I think this is going to be a really fun experience and, uh, we definitely want folks who are listening to the show to reach out to us and tell us, you know, what they appreciate from Xbox game pass. Um, because you know, maybe there's a game we haven't had a chance to play yet that you think would speak to either of us. Exactly. And that's kind of something that we definitely want to be able to have your involvement with. Like, yes, we'll like, we get to talk about it and be on the show and stuff, but we want to be able to showcase, uh, games that you love that, that you found on game pass. So if you have a game that you absolutely love and, and feel like that, uh, that needs a little bit of attention or just like that more people should be playing, uh, definitely hit us up either in the comments on, on YouTube or, uh, or on like on the podcast services, leave a review and, or just reach out to us on social. Um, we'll, we will be able to sort of take those and we will be able to try them on the show and be able to talk about them. We'll say, Hey, so-and-so has suggested this, uh, this game for us. And we decided to try it out and you know what? It's awesome. Uh, so that, <laughs> yeah. So whatever game you, you think we should try out, definitely, uh, let us know. Um, now we should also mention, uh, as, as well, um, a, where can you be able to obviously listen to this show or even watch this show? Uh, we are kind of like, it, it, like we just launched this. So uh, there's, this, there's, there's a lot of places to be able to kind of uh, like where you can be able to go to find podcasts. We're there. Just, just think about it that way. Wherever all podcasts are sold, uh, you can go and listen to the show. Uh, so whether you're on uh, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, uh, or, or or Google, whatever whatever platform you prefer to listen to your podcasts on, we are definitely there uh, and available for you. So just search for the Xbox. Po Xbox Passport, and you'll be able to uh, find us there. Also, if you want to actually watch the video version of this show, you can be able to go to uh, youtube.com slash at Steve Saylor. Uh, that's my uh, YouTube channel, and we will have those, epi those video episodes available uh, for you as well. So 
audio uh, all on, audio is all on all podcast platforms and uh, video is uh, will live on uh, youtube.com slash at Steve Saylor uh, and so you can be able to check that out when uh, and make sure to subscribe so you can be able to know when those uh, episodes will come out so with that all being said obviously we I said at the top of the show that this show is presented and sponsored by Xbox Canada and uh, we kind of wanted to sort of discuss a little bit uh, just what is their involvement because uh, obviously like being the, the fact that this is a, a show presented by them and it's they, they're very much in, in involved as part of the show and and making sure that this show kind of gets out there to you um, but we wanted to at least discuss kind of uh, what their involvement is as far as the the content of the show so Leah why don't you tell uh, the folks at home uh, a little bit about that Sure. So, um, though, you know, we are totally kind of at our own devices of how we'd like to present this show. That's one thing that Xbox Canada was, uh, super nice to allow us to kind of construct how we wanted to build the show out. Um, we're allowed to speak freely about how we feel about the games, um, giving constructive criticism. Um, I come from an art uh, background. So I very much feel that criticism doesn't have to be just negative. It's things to work on for the future, ways to improve. And uh, yeah, they are, you know, helping us out with maybe getting some interviews and things like that. A very cool one that we've got today, just gonna Mm -hmm. say. But Mm -hmm. yeah, it's very much like us kind of choosing what we would like to speak of. And obviously considering um, our history and kind of portfolio over the years. Uh, we are very much going to talk about the stuff that interests us. And uh, and yeah, we're not exactly just like towing the Xbox line the entire time. But the thing is, is the reason we want to do this is because we think this service is so good. So uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a really interesting exploration um, for us in this process and them kind of letting us speak freely. And uh, yeah, it should be interesting. So if you've got uh, questions or anything for us, like like we've mentioned already, please shout out on social media or the comments of this video. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely take that on because yeah, it's, it's nice to be so open with a company to be able to speak about their product. And that's one thing that I love about Xbox. I feel like they do really listen to the community and what yes. they want. And it helps them build a better service, a better product, a better uh, console, everything. So, uh, so yeah, I'm really excited to be working with uh, Xbox Canada. You and I have both worked with them in the past. Um, yep. I did an Xbox All for One with the Girls on Games crew for Holiday a few years ago. And Similarly, we were allowed to do whatever we wanted, um, you know, kind of pitched an idea. Uh, it did involve me sing- singing, so I don't know. Is there, why is there, they is let there a record me do of this? I need, to, I, need to, I need to hear this. Uh, yeah, we rewrote a Christmas song to do with uh, nice. Dead Rising. Oh, wait, so. I think I, hear, I did hear about this. I think I did hear, hear this one. Yeah, this was, that was good. Yeah. yeah, and of course, like, I've worked with Xbox. I, I was the host for the X- Xbox Accessibility Showcase last year uh, in 2022. Uh, uh, and then and then but also we should mention too it's like yes we love Xbox and we and and we're fans of the service we're fans of Game Pass we're fans of of what Xbox does but we should mention too is that we also love PlayStation we also love Nintendo like the, we love playing their games as well we uh i i am of of the mindset of it's like you know what you play the games that you want to play on wherever you want to play them mm-hmm. and uh we just happen to you know our our console of choice that we generally uh, gravitate towards is Xbox and but it doesn't mean that we're like we'll you'll never hear us uh, uh badmouth a PlayStation or Nintendo or anything like that on the show because we just love playing games Games. And that's essentially kind of what the show is about. We're highlighting games that are fun to play, uh, and they just so happen to be on Xbox Game Pass. Uh, so we're very excited to be able to talk about that. And we wanted to at least kind of give that sort of manifesto a little bit, uh, just to kind of like, you know, put your mind at ease a little, like if you're kind of like, I don't know if I trust these these two, uh, but <laughs> like you, you, believe me, you can trust us, and also you can trust Xbox Canada at the same time, which we're very grateful for them to be able to sponsor and, and, uh, for this show, which was, we're, we're super super great this is thank great. you thank you very much <laughs> they're, they're making sure the lights and mics stay on uh, which is awesome um now before we get into the meat of the show because i know you probably like a lot of uh, like a lot of you you may not care about any like the, the two of us that's fine we'll win you over in the end but you're and you're here for larry but we do have uh, two more things that we want to be able to kind of talk about uh in our very first show we do have kind of a bit of i'm borrowing this from uh, uh from snowbike mike from uh from, uh, from the x cast i'm kind of funny shout out to them uh they ha- he uh, likes to do these icebreaker questions uh mm-hmm. so i have an icebreaker question for our very first episode uh leah i want to ask you mm-hmm. what was the very first game that you played on xbox 
Well, I'm kind of happy that you preface that we like to play all consoles and everything (laughs) because I actually did not get into the Xbox ecosystem until I started doing Girls on Games. So conveniently at the radio station, they had a Xbox 360 there and as well controllers and the stuff to play like Rock Band and all those kind of stuff. Because they used to bring it to events and have it as part of like the street team setup where you could like play games at the event. Um, But the game that they had there that I'd always heard about that I really wanted to try was Dead Space. So I took the console home one day and played through the original Dead Space and had a lot of fun with that. Uh, So yeah, that was my intro to Xbox. My very first full, I owned console was the Xbox One. And uh, I have not turned back since. Like it has been full steam ahead with, with most often, if I'm playing a game, it's on Xbox, unless it's obviously a first party game to another platform. Sure. I love that, you? actually. Uh, well, I, uh, funny enough, actually, I'm playing the Dead Space remake now. I did a review on it, but I'm, I'm still uh, kind of uh, diving through on that. On and this is my first time playing it, so I'm very, very excited. And yes, I am playing that on, on Xbox as well. Um, but for me, I go back a little bit further um, because this, like, this is why Xbox is so special to me personally. Uh, and and I'm wearing like a, kind of the original Xbox logo uh, shirt today um, because uh, and actually my my, my very first Xbox is right back here uh, in behind oh, me. Yeah. If you're watching this video version, you can see the original Xbox. It's right there. Um, that is my original Xbox that I received for Christmas in 2002. Uh, it was my, my parents gave that to me uh, for Christmas. Uh, and it was the very first console that I, uh, I ever like that. It was actually mine. Our family, we used to have consoles that we would share. Uh, like I'm sure as you, like you would, we'd share mm-hmm. with our our family and our brother, like my brother and my sister. We would we would play the same uh, games, and we could never have it. It was never ours. And the Xbox was specifically uh, mine. And I remember the very first game that I played with that. Uh, I can't remember if it came with or my parents bought it separate, like separately. Um, but it was, uh, it was Halo. It was the original Halo that came with it, and it was the very first uh, uh, game that I, first person shooter game that I ever played on console because I played uh, Half Life bef- uh, on PC and I loved it. So mm-hmm. I was really interested in kind of uh, this sort of a sci-fi uh, shooter. But uh, how do you do this on a console with a with two sticks instead of a mouse? How does this work? <laughs> uh, and I remember playing it, and it was the very first game that I ever rolled credits on. Now, for, for those who may be wondering, um, yes, I talk about accessibility, but I am also disabled. I have a condition called nystagmus, and uh, it is very hard for me to be able to see and play games. So when I tell you that when I rolled credits on this game, that is a very big deal for me. Uh, I've never been able to, to do that before. Uh, and it's not to say that, uh, that Halo had great accessibility back in 2001. It didn't, but it was, it, it was just enough of a game that I could actually be able to uh, uh, like, sit down and enjoy. I probably took a lot longer to play it than, uh, than most of fo- uh, my friends, but I was able to, uh, to play it and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and basically roll credits. And it was one of my favorite uh, ex- experiences playing games. Um, but I want to, and I want to add an epilogue to this because cut to uh, during the pandemic, there was this app that, uh, that I don't know if anyone remembers or knows uh, called Clubhouse. It was sort of like ah. a way to like, be able to kind of have these sort of get togethers and you can create like these conferences almost and like have speakers come up and people can listen in and people can be able to just chat via their phones. Uh, well, uh, Aaron Greenberg, who is uh, uh, has, like uh, the marketing over at Xbox, uh, would have these regular uh, sort of like gaming gatherings in Clubhouse. And, uh, and I was in there and there was this one night where um, Seamus Blackley, the father of Xbox, uh, was in there. Aaron was in there. Uh, Jeff Keeley was in there. Uh, and then also uh, Marty O'Donnell, the uh, the composer of the original uh, Halo. And we're ta- they're talking about the beginnings of Xbox and kind of what it was like at that point when they were launching the console. This uh, and and I was just everyone in there was just kind of eating it up. And we all got to sort of uh, whoever was speaker, we got kind of got to talk about sort of our first experiences with Xbox. And I told that same story that I just told you. And one of the best moments of my life was at one point, every, like, every, like after I finished the story and, and everyone would kind of like really liked it and kind of took a pause. And Marty basically said, Steve, that was a beautiful story. Here, like, listen to this. And he turns like in the clubhouse and I guess he had a piano right beside him and he plays the Halo theme. Oh, you're piano. giving me shivers. You're it giving me was, shivers. I'm getting shivers now. And I like, I... What, like oh it was like one of the best experiences like hearing the, the the halo theme live on piano and i was just like 
<gasps> and we had to, we, like Aaron had basically said, "Okay, we can't, we can't even, we can't even get get past that. We have to end that the, the clubhouse that like, right then and there. It was the <laughs> most beautiful moment to end on, and it was it still like it was kind of like one of the best experiences I had, and and it's just it just cemented. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I love this industry. I love what I do, and and that was a cool moment for me. So that always will have a uh, a deep space, uh, a deep, a deep, deep uh, in my heart, uh, love for Xbox. So." Um, yeah, so that's our, our icebreaker question. Now, uh, Leah, I wanted to be able to uh, ask you, cause we're always going to have a segment, uh, during the, sh- during the, uh, the show is we want to talk about obviously what we are playing, uh, and what we are playing on, on Xbox game pass. Uh, so every, every episode, we're going to be talking about that and, uh, and sort of discuss, maybe t- talk about games we've, we've played some of these games, we, it was suggestions from our audience or just games that kind of are just coming out on Xbox game pass. This will be kind of that segment for that. So Leah, why don't you talk about kind of what are you currently playing on Xbox Game Pass. So I've got three games right now that I'm kind of playing through. Okay. Um, one of them is super long. One's an indie darling. And the other one is because I love the weird and the wacky. All it right? sounds like the beginning of like a joke, like a priest and a <laughs> rabbi and a... Three guys walk into <laughs> so a bar. Walk to bar, yeah. Um... <laughs> oh my. So... The big game that I'm playing, the 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 one that like is taking up all my time, I'm constantly thinking about, is Persona 5 Royal. I am mm. 110 hours in. I am, I think, wow. nearing the end of what would have been the original Persona 5, because obviously they did some add-on stuff with, with sure. Royal. And man, I love that game. And now that they've got the other two, like Persona 4 Golden and Persona 3 on Portable on there as well, now mm. I've got this itch where like I've heard nothing but good about Persona 4 Golden that I really want to play that. But like how to fit in another 100 hour game considering all the good games that are coming out in the next few months. It's going to be whoo. See, that's the thing I'm like, I I hear so much about that game, specifically uh, the Persona series, four and five. And they always talk about how long this game is. What is it? Like, this is like, like, as as a question, like, what is it that makes you want to be able to play that game for that long? I'm getting really, really into the story. I really appreciate the story is that story. engaging for 110 hours. Yeah, because wow, there's so okay. many characters with how you interact with them, the concept of building relationships with your confidants. And also then there's an RPG element with the actual personas, you know, like they have different abilities and all that kind of stuff. And like, I really like the management kind of stuff that's involved with a lot of RPGs. Actually, a lot of the games that I kind of navigate towards to seem to pick up a lot of the management style things that that happen in games, um, min-maxing and stuff like that. So I, I have been really drawn in. Plus on top of that, the art style, phenomenal. Mm. The music alone. Oh, really? Like, some of the best video game music, say you're talking about Halo earlier, and I remember my first instance with, you know, turning on the Master Chief collection, because that was my first intro into the Halo series and playing through that and hearing the music. The Persona 5 has the exact same thing for me. There are tracks in there that like I have on regular rotation in my music library because they're so good. Futaba's Palace is like some of the greatest music. It just it it brings in like jazz with hip hop and pop and like slow mellow beats too and then maybe some techno in some of the palaces so like all of it together just makes me want to continue moving forward and see how this is all going to pan out with the i guess you could say mystery that's involved in the story of the game um but yeah that's what's got me hooked and and you know i haven't been able to let it go i started when the game was released in game pass and have just been plugging through the whole time um up until now and because there's just so many other games to play too it's hard to keep going but uh, (laughs) it is one that i'm like turning back on all the time Okay. All right. I've, yeah. I've heard so much about it from like from friends, and they're like they say it's so good. But the thing that sort of intimidated me was the amount of hours that are needed to be able to play this game. But I'll I'll give it I'll give it a try. I mean, heck, yeah. it, hey, it's on Game Pass, so I might exactly. as well give it a try. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what else are you playing? The other ones, um, Potion Craft, which is I saw that. Valley. Yeah. Yeah. So very interesting game. Uh, a mix of like management of this store, uh, where you are a potion maker, an alchemist, 
um, and you have to concoct these potions. But how you do that is making your way through this very interesting map um, that is very dynamic, different items that you put in the potion can make your potion, you kind of explore this map in different directions. Uh, Mm. And that is really, really interesting concept because I've never really seen like a crafting-esque game quite Mm. like that before where you're like how you kind of navigate the scene. Uh, Very, very interesting art style, uh, aesthetic. Uh, The music's good, but I do find it a little repetitive, especially when you're playing as long as you are. It's kind of the same track over and over again. Um, Unlike, I I do think they could do some more with that. I know they're working on improvements and DLC and things like that. So I'm really excited to see where it goes. Uh, But yeah, that one's a phenomenal one too. And, you know, perfect that it's on Game Pass and I can play on my Series X out in the living room. I can play on the PC and I've even tried it on my iPad, kind of like on the go because you can do the the cloud uh, streaming of it. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm wondering. It might awesome. be my my streaming uh, like uh, a cloud game uh, for yeah. that one because I feel like I could be able to play that on the go, like little bits and pieces. Like, can you be able to like do that? Be able to like play like five like five to ten minutes like at a time with that? Yeah, totally. Okay. Because like, there's no real time inducing mechanics. You can kind of play as you see fit. Like there there is a day cycle. Um, you have what you can, you can explore your map. Usually my pattern each day is to, I wake up as myself, the alchemist. I'll go over and see in one screen, you move over one screen, you get your, your partitioners that come through the customers and they have different needs, different potions they want. So you meet their needs. You might have a uh, fellow merchant who comes through and you could buy some ingredients off them. Then I go over and look on the other screen in my little garden and get some more items there. Then I have a bunch of tasks that I need to create after and try and make uh, this, this philosopher's stone like uh entity at the end game right so you're like working your way through all this these potions that you're trying to make to build the ultimate potion um yeah and each day kind of cycles through you you earn money build potions and hopefully soon enough you know take over the world as a either a very good uh alchemist or a very evil alchemist oh i like Mm. that okay all right yeah (laughs) and besides that um because why not power wash simulator is like <laughs> yes. the most awesome thing ever who would have thought that you know power washing my house like i we live in toronto <laughs> you know mm-hmm. it's not exactly like i have a yard but no. um i do know that there's something very satisfying about cleaning especially power washing and who would have thought that same itch could be scratched virtually through power wash simulator so when i'm feeling like i don't know what to do i pick a power wash simulator and clean a house or maybe lara croft's uh yeah like or car yeah so i i love playing that game so much like it is it became my zen game to just kind of chill and relax uh to the point where like i would purposely sort of set aside like a saturday afternoon or a sunday morning and just you know turn on a podcast or turn on some like you know some like some jazz and yes. just basically just kind of like just sit down i have like my steam deck and uh, basically through game pass i'm playing the uh, uh, power wash simulator on that and i'm just like ah oh. This is nice, and yes. I and like, and I don't even like, and I'm pl- and I'm just basically just cleaning up a, a, a playground, and I'm just getting rid of all the dirt and grime, and I'm like, I would never do this, or never want to do this in real life because uh, I hate outdoor chores with a, with a passion. <laughs> I've always have ever since I was a kid. Uh, but this seems like the my, kind of perfectly on my. It gives you all the fun of it without all the you know the sweat and the grime and the dirt and then being outside under the sun because you know the sun will kill me uh at, at some point in my life uh so yeah this is like the perfect sort of game for me and i just i love it it's great <laughs> how about you what are you playing right now okay so of course uh, uh i've been playing hi-fi rush uh yeah. that just like, kind of shadow drop this seems like 2023 is the year of the shadow drop all of a sudden mm-hmm. almost uh with with games these days but uh yeah hi-fi rush was playing that i am terrible at rhythm games uh and and the good thing is actually there is some accessibility that can kind of help with that which is really great um and uh i i just love the animation of this like it is if you if you ever were into saturday morning cartoons as a kid and you love that feeling like this is so much like that and and even just the way they present it to in how seamless 
that animation style is like you go from a cutscene that looks like it would just be like it would be straight out of like Nickelodeon or or uh, or Disney or whatever, and then it goes it, it seamlessly would jump it would go into gameplay, and then it would just kind of slow like it would just transition straight into like cutscene again. It just you really do feel like you're playing a Saturday morning cartoon, and uh, and it's really really great, especially with obviously the music that that's in it. Uh, it's so catchy and just you, you're always constantly like just kind of nodding or just kind of like tapping your foot to the beat because you have to, otherwise you're gonna be, you're miss out on all the like the. Extra bonuses and stuff <laughs> um so and and i love the fact as well like i mean the cat the 808 is like your metronome it's your personal metronome and i just love that they call it 808 because if you're if, if you don't if you know a little bit about how music is made you may know what an 808 is and an 808 is a is a rhythm uh machine that was kind of uh, invented in the 80s it's, it's, it's a synth-based rhythm machine where you can kind of create these beats that uh basically i can guarantee you you have all heard a song that has an 808 beat on it and the fact that it's just like so narratively like nerdy of like just calling the cat your metronome the thing that keeps you on the beat 808 it was like so chef's kiss so mm -hmm. uh so congrats on tango uh for for making that because that was such a great game and uh and and kind of showcases what i always felt was like the one of the beauties of of, of game pass in that um it, especially for xbox first party studios or xbox game studios in that they are allowed to like those like the studios that work within xbox are allowed to sort of take risks on games and create these small, like really great experiences, and they could have a platform that they can just release it on on Game Pass, and people will be able to jump in and play. Like we had Pentiment already, uh, mm -hmm. and we've had uh, Hi-Fi Rush, and I love that. I love like the, these small teams that just want to be able to create these great games, um, but they feel like that they're kind of like not necessarily trapped in, a, in in a studio, but just like they're in a studio where they like you know they're part of a larger team and they have these ideas they want to kind of do, but they may not be in a position in the studio to be able to want to make these games. So, like the fact that, it, like, they could, like, without have them normally, would they go off and kind of make their own, in, like, independent studio, and they would make their game themselves, and they they have are obviously are, are free to do that, and that's awesome. Um, but what I love is that it kind of can also can help keep the talent within Xbox Game Studios and be like, hey, you know that passion project that you want to create? Why don't you create it with us? Create, give you a small team, give you a small amount of budget. Why don't you create what you want to create, and 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 you're off and you're off to the races. And we'll give you you put it up on Game Pass, and you're good to go. And I love that. So, and Hi-Fi Rush is a great example uh, of that. Um, another game I've actually been playing uh, that has been out for a while, and I was kind of like kind of surfing around the Game Pass library, and I was just trying to find a game that sort of maybe kind of appeal to like to the sort of the things that I like, which is usually space related. Mm -hmm. uh, hence why I'm excited for Starfield when it comes out. Uh, but I found <laughs> we all <laughs> is that right. Uh, we will do, by the way, we will do a special episode dedicated to just Starfield when it, it when it is out. So make sure you subscribe because we will be doing a deep dive into Starfield uh, when that, when that game uh, finally comes out. But uh, the one I've been playing uh, is, is, is hard space Shipbreaker. Have you heard of this, Leah? No, I haven't. Please enlighten me. So this game is kind of like you are a, uh, a, a it's kind of like you are a a worker, kind of like a blue collar worker that uh, gets to wor work in space. And you have your like you're kind of like uh, and your job is uh, this corporate this corporation is kind of uh, uh, is basically tasked like there's so much like kind of like. Uh, of just debris and just broken down ships and stuff that your job is your space your 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 task is you be able to break the, those ships up into uh, reusable parts and the uh, and the parts that aren't reusable they get thrown into the furnace and you they kind of they dock a ship right into your little like shipyard thing and you get to float around in zero gravity and you have these tools that basically can kind of cut away and break apart sections of ships and you basically get to like uh, tow them to either a, a, a bin that has like okay this is where you can actually be able to sell these uh these parts and or you can be able to throw them in the furnace and you gain you earn money uh each time you you do that because the, the you need money in order to be able to get out of the massive amount of debt uh that you have because part of the thing is is that you uh as a shipbreaker it's a very dangerous profession in that you could die at any given point so what this company basically has done is that they will uh they have uh they have essentially cloned you uh so that anytime you die they basically recreate a new clone with all the memories you had before and you base and you are and you're and you're now in debt to that company and 
until you can be able to pay it off, then you're officially free and be able to go and, and, and move up in the company or uh, leave and go and go somewhere else. So uh, you're essentially paying off the massive amounts of debt like the billions of dollars in debt. Uh, and you're doing that by basically breaking up these, these ships. So there's actually kind of like a fun little story with it as well. Um, but it's also kind of great cause you're having to track like, okay, you're having to uh, like, there's dangers that are on these ships. There's like kind of like a uh, engine cores that you have to kind of be careful of and how you're taking them out of the ship. So that way they don't d like ding, like ding or dent into anything. And you have to kind of like separate them and, and make sure they're not dangerous for anybody. And then, but also you have to kind of track your, your health and your oxygen level because every 15 minutes your oxygen level will deplete and you have to kind of go back to be able to kind of replenish it so you have to keep oh. an eye on all of that stuff uh and also make sure that you don't go into the furnace because that can also happen that happened to me twice uh <laughs> is it like a survival game or is no. it like a management sim Ooh. no it's it's kind of think of it this way it's literally it's kind of like the idea of power wash simulator but in space so okay. you have this. So you have this thing. Yeah, basically, you have, you have a ship, and your task is you're just supposed to break it up into all the all the pieces, and yep. you either and you basically separate it into the furnace, the uh, what's redeemable, or what's like a kind of like you can get broken down into all the exp like little particle parts and, and material stuff that they can be able to make into other things, like basically recycle. Uh, and so it's kind of like that. So you just have the ship, and you can just go in and you know, take piece, bits and pieces of parts together and just kind of separate them all and all while you're in zero G and it, and yeah, it's kind of like power, you're given a job like power wash simulator. Uh, and, and instead of a power washing something, you're basically just breaking ships apart and kind of, you know, putting them into the pieces into the right spot. Definitely more risk than power wash simulator. Cause you can't die. Yes, in that you can't one. die in that one. No, this one you could definitely <laughs> die. Uh, and is there a penalty? Like, do you like end up with like more money if you, that you have to pay back? Because oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, because like, yeah. It's, you? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Oh, essentially. Man. Yeah. <laughs> and by the end of the game, I haven't got to the end of the game yet, but I think from what I, what I read is that you basically get to like sort of see how, okay, have you been able to pay off your debt or do you have to still keep working uh, for the company in order to be able to keep paying that off? Uh, wow. So, <laughs> wow. First person, third person? Uh, first person. What is first person. And yep. what's the art style like? Uh, kind of, um, hmm, actually, that's a good question. Uh, kind Anything of, was... reminisces you or like you, you, you looks like something else. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to, th uh, trying to think. It has kind of like a style of, Ooh, Oh, that's a, uh, Oh man. It kind of like, I guess, um, Ooh, I don't even know. Actually, it, like, I'm trying to think of like a, a, a game to compare it to. Yeah, um, I'm gonna look it up here now too, because yeah, yeah, I feel like this got my name written all over it, and this is why we're doing this show because <laughs> I love getting I, games recommended to. Me. Yeah, I will say it's kind of like a little bit hyper realistic. It's kind of yeah. like it, it's it's a little bit kind of close to real life uh, with a little bit of like a cartoonish sort of like uh, art style, I guess. It reminds and, me of like Satisfactory or something like that. Yes, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, that's cool. There you go. Oh yeah, okay. And are you playing this one on console on PC? Uh, I'm playing this on console. Cool. All right. Controls are good on console because yes. sometimes with these, I'm, I'm, you know, sometimes the, the same yeah. are designed and it works better on with a controller or with a mouse and keyboard. But yeah, uh, if you're I will it say works good with controller. Um, I'll yeah, I will say playing on controller is yeah. is. I mean, you have to kind of obviously like because you're 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 floating in zero g, so you have okay. to kind of like sort of net like kind of like you utilize your like uh your thrusters on your pack to kind of like just you know stabilize yourself or to mm -hmm. uh to kind of go for, like fly up or fly down or forward. So you kind of have to if you can handle that, then mm -hmm. you should be able to be okay with 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 this one. But cool. Uh, yeah. Essentially, then you have to. Uh, I I do think actually probably like the the sensitivity on. Uh, on when you're kind of aiming your like because you have like a laser to be able to kind of like cut down certain pieces yeah. uh, uh, break them off um and so there's there uh, there's a little bit of like a uh, i found like a little bit of a sensitivity issue where it's just like you kind of like it's a little bit of a jerky movement so maybe mouse and keyboard might be the better choice i don't know um but yeah. for me yeah it was it was manageable uh, on console for sure it's also giving me Subnautica vibes. Have you played Subnautica? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I would say yeah. that's a good, good comparison. Yeah, for sure. Love so. that game. And yeah. uh, Below Zero. Yeah, also on Game Pass. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then lastly, I'll, I'll only briefly touch on this, uh, but uh, The Walking Dead Season 1, I've never actually played that. I never, I, so yeah. I've never known what the story is like on that one. So I, I heard so much about it and the fact that the entire season is on Game Pass. I was like, okay, I want to give it a try and see what, uh, see what the story of, uh, of Clem is in this, in this uh, Walking Dead world. And, uh, you know, it's Telltale. So, of course, they make like really, really great story-based games and 
Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm about a couple chapters in, and it's uh, it's kind of it's it's, it's fun. It's great. It's nice. not making me sad at all. Never. No tears. No box of <laughs> no, tissues in the side, yeah, right? Exactly. Don't so, you love when games do that to you? They come uh, out and you're just like, what? Like Ori, or oh, Ori, or Valiant yeah, yeah. Hearts, and oh. I'm just like, why? I did not know I needed a box of tissues next to me. I I, I think I need to kind of permanently have one on my desk at any given point because you like you, you never know when it sort of like it just hits you. Uh, yeah, and, pulling pulling on them heartstrings, man. That's how you get us gamers. Yeah, pulling on the yep, heartstrings. Yep, yeah, mm, exactly. So, uh, so that is basically what we have been playing. And so now let us jump into what you probably may have like been uh, been wanting this whole entire time. Yes. <laughs> We did, as the thumbnail and as the title of this episode says, yes, we did uh, have the opportunity to be able to sit down with Major Nelson himself, Larry Herb from Xbox. Um, so why don't we jump into uh, that interview and that conversation right now? All right. Well, for our very first guest, our very first interview for our very first show, there is none other a person that I could think of that we should have for this podcast, for this inaugural podcast. Then Major Nelson himself, Larry Herb from Xbox. Hi, Larry. How are you? Hey, Steve, Leah. Thank you. First of all, thank you. That was a lovely, lovely intro you just gave me. Thank you for having me. And uh, I'm thrilled to, to be on your on the show. I mean, it's it's always a pleasure when I get to go on someone else's show because I don't have to do anything. I just show up and talk. So <laughs> that's the benefit of being talented. You basically just show up and just, you know, just yep. we just have fun and just have a good conversation. Exactly. So no, I'm, th I'm thrilled to be here. I'm looking forward to chatting with you both. Steve, you, you've been on my show in the past, so it's great mm -hmm. to be over here. Leah, you and I haven't had a chance to work too much together, but let's change that. Yes, let's. <laughs> looking forward I'm, to it. <laughs> I'm on board for that. Um, now, actually, Larry, I wanted to mention something because we because we had talked bef uh, beforehand uh, and we we have all, all three of us have something in common. Yeah. Um, and we talked about that. Lee and I talked about this in the uh, in the beginning of the show, but um you worked in radio along with us well not with us but like you worked in the radio industry uh as well that's correct i absolutely did i i when i graduated syracuse university i during syracuse university uh i was involved in radio we had us uh you know if you, if you don't know um syracuse in fact you're probably closer to it now than i am it's in upstate new york um it is it is a great broadcasting school and that's where a lot of the the top tier talent goes to learn their craft and we had a few radio stations on campus and I was involved with them all when I graduated um I went on and started and worked in radio for the next 10 years and it was pretty amazing of of what I could do and and what I learned and that was at the beginning of the transition at least in the United States of uh of of the of the single ownership up until that point the FCC said only you can only uh, each company can only so own, own a certain number of of uh of stations and, and in the mid nineties, they changed that. And now it's just all everything. It's owned by like four companies now. Um, so it's, it's, I kind of started at the beginning of that and I left in 2000. Were you like a music jock or were you like a talk radio news uh, kind of jock? I was actually none of the above. I was, oh. I worked behind the scenes quite a bit. I did. I was on the air a little bit with music and I, I, I blame my horrible taste in music from nineties. In fact, there is, a, there is a little bit of trivia that I'll share with you in just a moment. Um, but I was, I was, I was, so I was on the air a little bit, but primarily I was promotions and marketing. I did, I did engineering cause I'm a nerd. I was, I would climb the, climb the tower every now and then I'm, I'm too old for that now. Um, but I, I pretty much did everything, went on sales calls. I mean, you name it, I did answer the phone, whatever you want, did production, everything. I did everything. Isn't that the thing in radio? You become like very much a jack of all trades. Well, I'll yeah. tell you why. Do you, and this is what a lot of people don't know why. And you guys are going to laugh when I say this. You do it because if you don't, if you don't say yes, you'll probably get fired. So. <laughs> that is also true. That is very true. And I love it because it's like technically, wait a second. Have all three of us have never actually been on air in the radio, like on radio? Well, like, like actually have like our own show. No, I, I, no, I filled in. I mean, I had one in college, but yeah, yeah just, same. Was, but like, as far as like professional radio, like not actually yeah. have like a, a day shift. Like this is my shift. This is I'm uh, like I'm, our own, like own kind of like show. Cause I never had that myself. I was behind the scenes too. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I was just working in the digital side. Yeah, exactly. Well, wait, I didn't even do that. It was it was analog. It wasn't even digital back then, Steve. Um, oh, you cut you know, you cut the, the 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 tape with the with the with the, with the razor blade, the razor and the, and the, and the, the, the chalk. Oh yeah, and the grease pencil. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no, I I never had a proper show. I was always the you know at or behind the scenes. I wasn't in front. 
We uh, uh, on Shome back in when I was in Montreal, Shome's a m- major rock radio station uh, in Montreal. And it uh, we used to do this see, this special segment called uh, Full Moon Fever, where it essentially mm-hmm. was a takeover, usually around the full moon. And uh, back when Catherine and I had started Girls on Games, uh, we pitched uh, Gaming by the Light of the Moon and did oh, a full it. two hour uh, series where we mixed up music from games. So it was right. usually like soundtrack stuff, stuff used in trailers, um, right. you know, anything really. Uh, obviously, like sports games was a big part of that. And uh, we interjected with different stories about the games and why the music was important and all that kind of stuff. Talked about that Gears of War and all that jazz. So, yeah, it was that was fun. That was my only time that I've really done a like a big show besides like going in and like talking about video games because girls on games started at shown as a radio station thing. Right. So, uh, so yeah, that was a lot of fun back in the day, but now they just call me when they want commentary on like one of the news talk stations about the news that's happening in video games. <laughs> good. Well, it's yeah, good. It's anyway, so, but it was, it's fun, you know, cause you, to the point of the reason I love radio and Steve, it's interesting because I'd love to get your take on this as well. I loved it because it forced you to learn how to tell stories without this, mm-hmm. meaning without vision. You had to, you had to, it was theater of the mind. And yep. so that's, that's what I loved about it is, is if you couldn't do that, then you, you kind of, you kind of didn't deserve to move on to, to, to moving pictures and television and film. Cause you had to get car, core storytelling down first. Mm-hmm. And that again, we'll get to it eventually, but that, that's one of the reasons I love video games is the storytelling. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like actually, the the reason why because radio was always the dream job. Like yep. uh, like I mentioned before, but like basically, like uh, uh, video games is a second career for me. Radio was always the the, the dream job growing up because there was uh, uh, two shows that I would listen to all the time that I would actually like have like I would re- yes I mean this is to show how old I am. Uh, I would have cassette tapes and I would record the, off the radio two shows. One was uh, Sunday Funnies. Uh, mm-hmm. It was basically just clips of uh, stand-up comedians, for, uh, like just across, like they always had themes every single night right. or every single Sunday. And then the show right after that was Theater of the Mind, where they would show like they would play old school, like old time radio, like Orson Welles, yeah. uh, the Black Museum, or yeah. the Adventures of Harry Lime, or War of the Worlds, or whatever. And I was just All like, I was enamored, and that's why I fell in love because I was like, oh man, audio storytelling is so cool. And that's yeah. was like, that's why I was like, yeah, radio. And then yeah, as you said, like it just sort of like led to that's kind of like my favorite genre of games is like anything that has like a good story. That's yeah. what entices me the most. So agreed, uh, agreed. Yeah, mm. but. Um, Anyway, uh, speaking of gaming, though, um, <laughs> we, we want I, I this is gonna be the hard hitting questions here, Larry. Um, <laughs> what got you into gaming? Uh, you know, it was it was a lot of things. One of them was, you know, you, you know, cassette tape. <laughs> Shaw, Steve, I'm going to get I'm going to get way deeper than you in terms of cuts. <laughs> you know, when my mom brought home Pong, which was this this, you know, back in the 70s was was the rage and you could buy uh we didn't even, we couldn't even afford the atari version we had to get the sears and roebuck you know whatever that version was because it was a licensed version and it um i saw that what you could do is you're now you're not controlling pixels on the screen mm-hmm. for the first time instead of passively watching something you were now controlling pixels and granted you were just moving paddles up and down to bounce a little ball back and forth, but you were controlling picture pixels. And that from that point forward, I was enamored with the concept of connecting something to a display and being able to control this portal into another world. And as a result of that, you know, I, I, when I was, when I was in high school, we got one of the first computer labs. This is when computer labs were a thing, not individuals. I'm talking a room you went to. And, you know, I used to beg the math teacher, uh, Mr. Rich, I said, please just come in early twice a week. I'll buy you coffee and let me play video games on the computers. And that's that's what I did. And that was one of my first introductions to video games proper was having because we couldn't afford no one really had personal computers back then. Uh, certainly we couldn't afford it because my family didn't wasn't that well off. But it allowed me then to to really enjoy. So I was, you know, I was I was the only moron who went to school before it started and enjoyed it. So <laughs> I love that. Yeah, That's totally. Really cool. And then where did you, where did that bring you, like, as you started getting involved with Xbox? Like, what was your entry into starting to work with Microsoft and Xbox? 
Well, you know, you know, we're going to go back. We're going to go back to what we're talking about in radio. When I was in working in radio in the late nineties, uh, I was, I put one of our very, one of the very first radio stations streaming online with WKSS in Hartford, Connecticut. And we were using the real player then. Oh, real player. Remember that? Real player. Oh and, yeah. And, <laughs> uh, the thing that we, only a select few of audio <laughs> files on the internet could actually be able to use. <laughs> and, and I, so I was, we had put, we had, we had, put our radio station online. This is before you had to do licensings and write all this other stuff. So a few years later, Microsoft came calling and I was doing a lot of websites and all this other stuff for all of my stations. At that point, we had, I think, five stations that that had, you know, really quite a bit of uh, quite a few of them. And Microsoft came and said, hey, would you come be the editor of MSN Music, which was a precursor to iTunes and Spotify and pretty much everything else. This is 2001. So I said, yes. So my wife and I moved to Seattle from from New England and we started working. And it turns out that we were kind of entertainment because it's music. So put them put put all of them over here. Put the, so our my office was about five doors down from one of the one of the members of the team working on Xbox. And everybody from that point forward on that side of the hallway was working on Xbox. And I never knew what they were working on because we hadn't announced it yet. And I was just new at the company. But I remember standing at a conference room, waiting to go into a conference room and seeing them taking a PC out with with a controller. And I'm like, what what's going on here? I, I want to be part of that. Mm-hmm. So so it turns out one of the managers I had left and started Xbox Live. And then a few months later, called me and said, hey, I think we need your help. And I'm like, well, what's going on? They said, well, we got this thing called Xbox Live that we've launched. We need someone to talk about and engage with the community. And I'm like, sign me up. So I moved over to the Xbox team in 2003, and I never left. I'm still here. So that's that's kind of the 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 jaggedy yet straight line how I got to Xbox, and I I love it. It's fascinating because I can totally see how the experience from radio, because it is very much a community driven thing and exactly. how that translates over to what you were doing at that time. Yeah. And what the, the kind of the kind of the bridge that brought it all together was we talked about Microsoft came calling, but actually in 1995, when windows 95 launched and the start button heralded the, you know, the beginning of the new era, I realized that Microsoft was going to, was going after America online AOL, if you remember that. Mm-hmm. And they had, they had this thing called the MSN, the Microsoft network. And I found out that they they needed people to manage the community. So I had a, spun up a separate company and my wife and I started managing communities from Connecticut, working for Microsoft distance, distance, you know, we were, we were, we were doing it before anybody else was doing it. Uh, we were thousands of miles away. And so we were doing that. So that's how I under, got to understand how Microsoft worked while I was while I was a vendor there. And then I went full time when I when I when I got the role as, as MSN as editor in chief. Wow. But, but to your point, it was all about community and radio is community. It's it's just happens to be a local community. So I took everything I learned from there, brought it into what I learned when I was working on MSN communities. And then it just kept kept snowballing until I got to Xbox. I love that because because and you are definitely like kind of like the uh, person to be able to like interact with with the community because like, ever like all the people at Xbox that we've that we've talked to and then we know like they're all very much like involved in in, in like chatting with the fans and, and but you're the one that's like been in there from from the very beginning like because I remember meeting you at X O seven okay uh, way where was back that? in two thousand seven yeah that's you way remember back. where it was. Uh, Toronto. It was in. Uh, well, that's, right. that's right. I came up and saw Green Skull and a few others. That's right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It was. And I, and it was like one of the things is like, cause I had my co host with me at the time and he's like, that's Major Nelson. That's Major Nelson. I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I just like, I think we, we, we chatted for like, for like a little bit. Uh, but it was like, I always like, it, it, like the impression that I had from you from the very beginning was that you cared a lot about what the fans uh, thought yeah. and what like it was like, yes, it was cool to be at the event to be able to play all the new games that are coming out and stuff like that. Like that was my first gaming event ever. And the fact that it was like you were like, OK, what like, what do you think? What's like, what do you think of this game? How is this or whatever? It was like you you asking for feedback was something I was like, I had never seen that before and haven't i mean there's been people come along that have been doing that since but i was like that impression always stay with me thank so you. larry thank you very much for for doing that because that's like i i, I appreciated that so first much. of all steve thank you for pointing that out and it's you're right i mean it's i started doing what to me 
was an obvious conversation to have with the audience. But most big companies at that point, this is before social media in, in a lot of regards, mm -hmm. Facebook was just starting to ramp up. And of course, Twitter was just coming online. So a lot of people were like, they didn't really understand how to have a dialogue with, with, with community. And I, I just basically went to my managers and said, just talk to them, ask them. That's all they want to be part of the conversation. These are many of these people are very smart. Mm -hmm. And so let's, 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 let's get what they, let's, let's listen to them. It's, it's really not any more, more sophisticated than that. Let's get them in the conversation. They're going to talk about our products anyway. Do we want to be part of it or not? Of course we want to be part of it. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, so now like, uh, like, cause we're, this is a game pass show. That it is, is the, yeah. the, the, game the pass, premise game of pass, this game thing. Pass. Yeah. Game pass. Exactly. Like best value in gaming. That's going to be their slogan for the show for the entire time. Uh, I, cause I wanted to kind of like, uh, ask a little bit, uh, if it's okay, like if it's okay to be able to kind of ask like a little bit of the, you know, pulled back behind the curtain. Um, yeah. so like w we want to kind of know why did, why was, uh, why was game pass so important to, xbox into microsoft to be able to create because no one had really kind of done that at least in the gaming space before a subscription service to be able to play yeah. uh, xbox games or just games in general and it was kind of like really like it was a it kind of has been a, it was a big risk at the, at the time it started so what was kind of like the the internal sort of like talking about it like what was it that sort of like yeah we should do this yeah, I mean, there were a lot of reasons. And to your point, you know, Phil has said it many times is it's putting gamers at the center when we when everybody plays, we all win. I know you've heard him say that. And the goal for for Xbox Game Pass is to offer games and game creators more choice and opportunity in how they discover, experience and deliver games. And that's what why we built it is we wanted to get more people playing games. I mean, the game, the cost of game development is rising. It's just the economics of the industry in, in modern times. So we've tried, looked around and certainly looked at all, a lot of other services out there, uh, whether it's a streaming service for music or movies, and realized uh, that subscription, it kind of makes sense. You can continue to pay this. We already had a subscription in Xbox Live Gold, and that was giving you access to, to being able to play multiplayer. But with this, let's let's give everybody a shared library, this notion of a shared library, which is I can call you up and stay, say, hey, uh, what are you guys doing tonight? Uh, Leah and Steve, let's get together and play. I don't know. Let's play the new Halo. And, and you know, there, we, back before Game Pass, it was, I like to think about it, think of it as you had to figure out what to buy because we all didn't have the same game sometimes. But now I like to pivot the conversation because with Game Pass, it enables the conversation instead of what to buy, what to play. Right? What are we going to play? We all have the same library. Let's figure out what we're going to play. Oh, we don't like this game. Let's jump to another game. Because now when you're when you're playing these games, you have the ability, seriously, not only with with uh, the quick resume feature of Xbox Series X and S to jump in out of games so quickly, whether it's a single or multiplayer game, it's kind of it's kind of astonishing. So Game Pass really enabled that type of mentality. And for gamers, it meant providing another option for them to discover games, play with friends. And it's a great value. And for developers it's another option for them to monetize their games. I want to dig into that a little bit because I'm, I love knowing how things are made, like the business side, the, the, yep. the gearhead side. Like, even if I can't code myself, I like understanding the concepts of how something comes to be. Sure. So in, as a developer or publisher, what else benefits them beyond, you know, having another opportunity to get their game out there? Is there anything in particular like selling points when you guys, especially the first time when you were ex trying to explain to them why to jump onto this at the very start of Game Pass, what really drew them in? What was the selling point? You know, there's a lot of things. And one of them is it's, it's basically empowering developers to create their dream projects. What do they want to do? Like we've got our ID at Xbox publishing program that has where, where Xbox, where your smaller games can go in and learn how to get their games published on, on Xbox Series X and S and One or the Xbox over on PC. So it allows developers to open the aperture to think about their creativity difference. So they don't have to worry about let's make the right game that's going to make the most amount of money right off the gate. It kind of turns things around a little bit and helps it. Uh, helps those game creators achieve success in in, in a variety of different ways. Um, and what that means is some of them, you know, we get the games that come on and all of a sudden the first week they're hitting a half a million or a million users and we get, we get word of mouth. There's story after story after story after story over the years of developers who say, 
when my game is on Game Pass, it sells more, not just people play more, but it sells more than if it's not on Game Pass. So we hear that all the time. So it, it's it's this interesting interesting cycle uh and it, it's it's it just really allows game developers to 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 live and 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 achieve their vision now every every game is unique so we have to work closely with each of the developers to find the right deal that reflects what they want to do right this isn't just a we're not just you know we're not just stamping it approved not approved we work closely with them to find out what they want to do and make sure that we can achieve goals that are great for everyone including you the gamer Sure, and and that's the thing too. Is like I know that like the the recent stories of like a, a like a, it's sort of like Game Pass is cannibalizing sort of sales, and I, I think it's like you're as you're right. It's like it's depending on on the game in and of, in and of itself. But one of the things that I kind of liked about uh is is that's different than sort of like when people sort of compare Game Pass to like Netflix or uh or whatever. It's like the difference between the two is that if if something's on Netflix, if it go if it, if a movie or a TV show goes away, it's usually gone like you can't like you can't sort of watch it again unless right. it sort of gets picked up on by another by another service what i like is that about game pass is that there are games that like are on game pass but they're also available to buy either on like on the xbox yeah. like store or uh like on steam or yep. uh whatever platform that they feel like that they have to like they're not it's not a hundred percent like exclusive to them to be able to like to to just be on game we, pass we do only. have some of those steve and that's that's kind of the role of first party in gaming right sure if you think about it that way yeah uh but yeah for for the most part you're absolutely right is that the the titles are available elsewhere as well and you can always hit a button and buy that game and play it forever you know for all intents and purposes exactly yeah um and, and speaking kind of like uh, just kind of for for the like for the players themselves um like we kind of talked about it a little bit but like game pass is kind of like that low like low risk way to just sort of like taste taste test a game and just try right. something else that they never really would have tried out before yeah. um so i'm kind of uh curious uh like what are what are the what games like surprised you uh that players have discovered because uh it was on game pass i'll tell you the big one i think you and i talked about this maybe last time maybe not i don't know i can't remember uh, vampire survivors Mm. that's one that people are like well it's 8-bit what do you mean that you only use one stick i don't understand and then when you start playing it and you're like okay let me play it again and let me, one more one more one more one more uh and that's a great one that where it's just exactly like that where it's tough to explain but you know what game pass members go play it yourself and they did boy did they ever so that is a great example of of you know uh, of people discovering a game that maybe they wouldn't have looked at before for whatever reason um, you know, it didn't have the multi-billion dollar budget or million dollar budget that some of the AAA titles do. And that's another th thing about Game Pass is it allows, you can play the, the the blockbuster hits, but you can also find these nice gems as well. That's the that's also the beautiful part. Yeah, my addiction yeah. right now is Potion Craft. That okay. has, oh my goodness, that has me written all over it. Yeah. And like who, just the ability, as soon as the, you know, it was announced coming to Game Pass, day one, jump in there, play right away. And the fact that I could go back and forth in my save between my Xbox Series X out in the living room, here on the PC, or even play on my iPad in bed through cloud. So like, so cool to be able to do that and carry my game wherever I need to. Is that something that you guys really strive to make sure is is available on most of the games? Well, that's what I mean. You just you said exactly what every gamer expects, right? Like yeah. I remember when we didn't have cloud saves and we announced yeah. that. Oh my goodness, fifteen years ago. This is just putting your your saves in the cloud. Um, but you, of course, when you fire up the game on your PC, why isn't it synced to do what I'm doing on a console or vice versa? Or if I'm playing on cloud, you just that's what you expect. The modern gamer expects things to just work exactly the way that they think they should work and when they don't work they get angry so so yeah we want we also want to make sure that that your time is precious so if you have a chance to sit down at the console and play for half an hour save it boom why should you re have to start it on pc or mobile why why would we do that to you that's that's just brutal um so that that's absolutely i mean as gamers they expect that seamless flow from screen to screen from mode to mode from from endpoint to endpoint yeah because i i like i i i play destiny that's kind of like that's my main game and, and like and you made me kind of think of like how 
much has changed just in that game alone in the fact that like as before it was like it wasn't cross play you had to be right. on the system that everyone else was on um yes your character was sort of cross save but it was sort of like do you have the right do you have the correct expansion or do you not have it and it it was always such a thing but it's like the, the simplicity of just jumping in at any given point uh, is if it's on game pass playing on the cloud playing on your like yep. streaming on your, on your xbox or or on your phone like i've done that with like sea of thieves is like that for me like i could just yeah. sort of pick that up anytime and just pick up and play and and just like you know go fishing or just you know go sailing the the the, the seas as a pirate like that's that to me is just like so dang cool that i could be able to just do that and it doesn't matter where i'm at i can always uh, pick up and play it's like the promise that we wanted to have when we started to kind of getting into like oh we can play games outside of just our consoles and right and pcs like that was really cool yeah like for um, this week this past weekend i um in fact i'll show you right here i've got the razor the razor edge 5g and ooh. i mean this is not a commercial uh but i i happened to have it and i had to go down to San, sandy uh, where was i uh, arizona for the super bowl last week and i was oh, able to take oh, this cool. i was Fun able times. to take this device device with me and to your point, I was playing, and let me, let me, and I talked about this. Uh, we did a live podcast last week. Um, I, I, I was playing on this device, and it was crazy because here I am on a mobile device. This is on a 5G network, and I am playing on a 5G network, Hi Fi Rush. Now, for those of you that haven't played Hi Fi Rush, it is a rhythm game, a rhythm game where you have to hit the button at a specific time. So the fact that I was able to play a rhythm game over 5G on a mobile device, that was mind blowing. And I did pretty good. I did pretty good. I mean, I'm terrible at those games anyway, but it's, <laughs> that was my problem, not, not the technology's problem. I was about to say, yeah, because I'm, like, I'm the same thing. Like, I have like zero rhythm. So I'm like, I'm okay with playing on story mode. And we're right. just like, it just I just want to have fun. And that's the thing too. It's like, you don't have to be on rhythm. Like you could still play, yeah. but it's like one of those, it's like, it's cooler if you can. Like, I, like, I think I have rhythm, but, but I don't. I really <laughs> We keep hearing about and saying that Game Pass is the best value in gaming. Yeah. How does Xbox see that? And has it changed the way you guys have approached you know, game development, game acquisition, those types of things? Well, I can say this. I mean, we just talked about all the different ways that all the different creative ways that we were able to 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 try things out. And I know that the everybody, everybody across Xbox and Microsoft as a whole is we like to experiment. Let's try new things. Let's what some things are going to work and some things aren't going to work. So that's this Game Pass has allowed us to try some experiments and try different different things. And some things have worked phenomenally well. I love that. So you mentioned that you're you're, you're playing Hi-Fi Rush right now, but yeah. like, is there like a hidden gem of a game on Game Pass that you're that you're playing right now that uh that people should should check out that may not have like the like the the, the big attention at the moment? You know what? I, it's funny because I I, I I thought you're going to ask that. And I was looking through and we talked about vampire survivors and I don't want to go off microphone here. I'm going to look at my this is my console, right? Obviously, <laughs> audio uh, listeners, he's literally pulling up his Xbox right now and just going through yeah. his game pass. <laughs> I mean, you guys are living through all the well. screens. I mean, you can look at the Yakuza series, which Jeff on my podcast, we know Jeff's a huge Yakuza oh, fan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um there, there, you know what? There's there's something for everybody in here. And there's there's a there's a couple of different games. Let me see, let me see if I've got because I know that there's some fun ones that came out this week and I've got my got my notes here. Um, so the answer to your question is I don't have a specific title because I gotta be careful about like you know showing fav favoritism. Oh, but sure. I, I I do have some, you know. We looked at um uh it's like a dragon. I gotta check to make sure that's on there as well. There's a bunch of others. I I I I, I just here's what I want people to do. Just go to go to when you when you open up your console, go down to the bottom right of the guide and click on Game Pass, and everything is in there. Um, you know, I I'm still churning away at Vampire Survivors. That was one that I liked, um, and I can't I can't say enough about that title. And I keep going back to that. But there's a lot more, and and we'll talk about them on my on, on my on the Xbox podcast as well, Steve. Nice. Ah, uh, okay, good, good, good plug, good plug. Good for, uh, Love you're, that. You're definitely a radio guy at heart. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> like, obviously, 2023 looks to be, uh, uh, at least uh, that we kind of see, is like a big year for, for Xbox. I mean, we've got a lot of uh, 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 highly anticipated titles coming out, yeah. and and uh, and obviously there's stuff that uh, that is still in the works that hasn't been announced yet. So, um, and I know you can't pick your favorites. Uh, I totally understand that. But what are you looking forward to? Uh, from Xbox uh, in in 2023. 
I'll tell you, you know, the two that we've announced, of course, we talked about, uh, we talked about one of them in the developer director earlier this year, and that's Redfall. Yeah. You know, I love, I'm really excited to play Redfall and see what that has to do as somebody who grew up in New England and spent time on islands. I'm going to see how, how much, how close they nailed it. Uh, but I also, you know, I love, I love their style of gameplay. So I'm really excited about that. And then of course, you know, um, a good friend, Todd Howard has a game coming out called Starfield. Mm. And, um, you know, I, I am a huge, huge Fallout fan. I played hundreds of hours of each, you know, Fallout 3 and, and, and Fallout 4. I just, I just, I love those games. Um, so I'm really, I'm just excited to see what Starfield is all about. I'm excited to take to the, you know, take to the heavens and see where, where, where it will take me. Yeah, yeah that's, that's one we're all looking forward to, too. Yeah. Can't I mean, wait I, I to go to, hands I on to talk that. about that, but I mean, we can't, we can't, we can't ignore it. It's going to be nope. a monster. <laughs> it's, it's coming. We are waiting patiently and cannot yeah. wait to, to play. So yeah, that's going to be super exciting. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Well, uh, Larry, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for for joining us on uh, on this journey uh, in uh, in our inaugural show, an inaugural podcast. We we appreciate it. Uh, and if anyone wants to be able to find you and and, and follow you online and uh, and all the things that you do, uh, where can people uh, go and and uh, politely stalk you online with consent? I mean, if you're on, if you're on if you're on Twitter, <laughs> you can you can hit me up at Major Nelson, Instagram at Major Nelson, on Xbox, at, just find me Major Nelson. Um, you know, send me a message on Xbox or any of the other platforms you know it's just it, please reach out to me say hello um you know i've got that we talked about the podcast i have the official xbox podcast that we do most weeks because sometimes we can't do them because we're so busy we, we try to do as frequently as possible um but you, you know there's or bump into me at, at your favorite gaming convention which i'm looking forward to get getting back into and when, when those come back in so um you know it's it's i'm just so thrilled and blessed to be able to talk to you two and this audience and work uh on on Xbox on behalf of the gamers um, and 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 talk about the great stuff that the smart men and women on Xbox are working on. It's been such an amazing journey to go from where I started in 2003 when we were just a few hundred people to now, you know, our boss reports to the CEO of, you know, CEO of Microsoft. It is a major portion of this business. So it has just been so humbling to see the not just Xbox grow, but just gaming grow. And everybody, you know, what I noticed is nobody identifies as gamers anymore. Like back in the day, oh, I'm a gamer, you're a gamer, not a gamer, not a gamer. We all play games. Everybody does. Mm -hmm. um, so that you don't even need to have that, that moniker anymore because it's just assumed you play games. My mom plays games. She plays, um, you know, she plays card games and she's, what, 85 years old. So she's a gamer. I call her a gamer. But everybody, you know, so many, so many of the young folks are playing games now. You know, Minecraft, I like to call Minecraft the new playground where people learn how to play and build together. Um, so it is it is a, it is just so humbling to see how this business as a whole, the industry has grown. So I'm just so thrilled to be part of it. So thank you for having me on. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Larry. And uh, yeah, everyone make sure to go follow Larry at Major Nelson and also make sure to listen to the official Xbox podcast at all podcast platforms. <laughs> thank you. Cool. Thanks, Larry. And it's just Steve and I again. And like so much thanks. So much thanks to Larry for joining us to chat because like that's one of those bucket list things we just did right there. Being mm -hmm. able to speak with Major Nelson himself. What oh, a yeah. gem. What an absolutely amazing individual that is so, so absolutely nice to be able to, you know, kind of give some of the back history and stories. And it's nice. Like I had said in the episode, I love seeing the journey in understanding yeah. how things get made and understanding, you know, he's, he's a gentleman who who's been through and seen through it all because he was there in the fruition. And, and yeah. it really shows of, you know, the care that Xbox has towards the community, especially yes. in the role that he holds. So uh, thank you so much, Larry, for joining with us uh, and chatting with us. It's such an awesome individual. Yeah. Um, but that essentially closes out this first inaugural episode of the Xbox Passport. Um, Steve, I'm going to run through all of the, you know, usual stuff that you do at a conclusion. Is there anything you'd like to add before I get into that jazz? No, I think it's just, it, it, I wanted to be able to, to mention, uh, it is fine. It is, feels so good to finally be able to say the Xbox Passport podcast out loud. I know. We've been saying it, we've been, we've been seeing it typed out for so long. So being able, like, it felt weird to kind of like 
oh yeah, this is the show. This is a thing we're actually doing now. So uh, I'm just very happy to be able to, to, A, yes, I have Larry on as well as the host of the official Xbox podcast, uh, but also like have a kind of like a, as a, uh, being able to start off this uh, this great show with you, so thank you, Leah, for 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 being a part of this and being on the, on the show with with me. This is really cool. I really appreciate it. Same. I'm so happy we're finally doing this together. Yeah. So let's get through that housekeeping stuff that we always do at the end of the show. Want to make sure that you subscribe to the podcast where all podcasts are found, including as well. If you'd like to watch the YouTube video of this, it is on at Steve Saylor's uh, YouTube channel. So go check that out there. Um, of course, we're going to be sharing it all across social media. So you're mm-hmm. going to see it. Yeah. <laughs> and if you like what you've heard or you've comments, concerns, or anything you'd like to give us some information or tell us what games you're playing right now, please do so by giving us uh, a rating or review on the platform of your choice, be it podcasting or YouTube. We do really appreciate those because it helps us in building the show as well as uh, helps with discoverability. This is a new podcast. So we are yes. trying to you know, move up and then podcast ranks, you know, all mm-hmm. that jazz. Um, also, uh, it's time to uh, chat through social media shout outs and things like that um, to follow us on social. Um, when we do that, you know, feel free to comment at us. We want to know what you're playing and all that jazz. Uh, so, Stephen, uh, where can people find you? Uh, yeah, you can find me uh, on Twitter at Steve Saylor. Uh, that's S-A-Y-L-O-R or on YouTube at Steve Saylor. Um, and you'll be able to find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash blind gamer Steve. And I'm Leah Dewar on most social media platforms. And as always, we'd love to hear from you. So please do reach out. And with that, it closes out our show. So until next time, when everybody plays, we all win. See ya. Bye.